Hello and welcome to Blytheway Business News. Uh, today we are joined again by Mark Child, who is the Chief Executive and Chairman of Condor Gold. Condor is listed in London on the, the AIM Exchange uh, and in Toronto on the main board of the Toronto Stock Exchange. Mark, welcome back. Good to have you here again. For viewers who may not be that familiar with, with Condor, um, can you give us a bit of an overview, please, of the operations out there in Nicaragua? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, the, we have 2.4 million ounces of gold in Nicaragua. That's very high grade. Uh, we own 100%. Uh, we have a big project of uh, 580 square kilometers. Um, of that 2.4 million, half is in the uh, higher category, indicated category, and half of that is in the inferred category. And we have about, within that, we have 1.2 million open pitable and about 1.2 million underground. Um, our strategy is to construct and operate a mine at the Holy Angel India project um, with a base case of 100,000 ounces, but we think that can be much bigger, uh, even by adding underground in. Um, and also to double our ounces and prove a five million gold district play. I remember the last time you were on the show, we were all a bit amazed by the sheer scale of what you have out there in, in Nicaragua. So. Um, You've today done um, the uh, interim results, uh, lots of positive movements at uh, La India. Um, you've, you've highlighted the permitting of the two feeder pits. Um, I think that's you know, increased the resource. Um, what, what, is this, what does that mean, the, the permitting? What does it mean for the project going forwards? You know, the feeder pits, well, we, we did a pre-feasibility study about five years ago, and that gives you, that's done by SRK, SRK Cargo, so it's all very independent. There's 80,000 meters of drilling on this project. And out of that PFS, it was done on a single pit, land your open pit. Um, and that produces about 80,000 ounces of gold uh, for an eight-year period out of that single land your open pit. And with that main permit, we were permitted the mine site infrastructure, so they permitted the processing plant, uh, the tailings, waste areas, explosive magazines, accommodation blocks, everything within a 500 hectare uh, area, which is all defined by polygons with the government. So that's our base case, 80,000 from a single pit. The feeder pits that you're mentioning, so a couple of years ago, we did additional drilling, uh, and then we have to go through a, a very long 18-month per permitting process to bring two very high-grade feeder pits in. So that adds another couple of hundred thousand, about 220,000 ounces, about five grams in, very high grade, 50% higher grade. And the net result of that is that the three pits we now have fully permitted for extraction. So it increases the open pit production by 50% from 80,000 in the PFS five years ago to 120,000 ounces of gold per annum for seven years on our current study. So it makes the project quite a bit bigger. The second point is because they're very high grade, it helps the project economics, uh, helps quick payback. And we've done some mining, we've done some studies to say, well, what if we start smaller? Uh, so the feeder pits allow us to, to start on a smaller plant if we wanted to and to high grade things and have quick payback. Um, so it's just overly very positive to have that. Uh, and it demonstrates the government's permitting, which is important to, to be in a country that wants you to mine. Um, Five point eight grams per ton. I've seen on, on some of the some of the results, which is, as you say, very high grade. Let's. Um, you've also been updating on the the land purchasing um, for the mine site infrastructure, uh, and then they've got the engineering studies underway. So, I mean, what's what's the latest on those things? Yeah. Well, when you get a permit in Nicaragua, um, they grant you the permit to construct and operate the mine for a ten year period, and that before you break ground. Uh, they want you to sort of tick a few boxes and uh, a few conditions before you can actually break ground. But one of the main conditions is actually buying the land. So we bought 85% uh, of the land within the main permitted area for land your open pit, uh, which is a significant de-risk because, and I'll just explain that, uh, obviously you can't mine on someone else's land, um, so we need to buy all the land. Um, uh, uh, in, in, in mining, you own all the subsurface mineral rights for 25 years in our case. You pay a rental to the government. So you find the gold, then you've got to go and buy the land after you find there's something interesting there. So that's why that happens. So no sort of toll milling can happen. Anything can happen, really. Or even build a processing plant until you've got the land. Or a bank won't lend you money, typically. 
until they know you've got the land, because why would they let you build something on somebody else's land? So land is a major de-risk to have locked that down. Uh, we are 85% of the way there. We think that's material. The balance we're confident we'll get. We're very, very advanced uh, negotiations with the remaining few landowners there. Uh, so we'll get that done. The engineering studies, it's all about de-risking. Uh, and we're 40% of the way there on the main study for the tailing storage facility, which we're fully engineering. It's where the waste goes. Um, uh, after it's gone through the processing plant, uh, we've done the waste rock schedules. We've done the design for the plant, uh, location, some of the infrastructure layouts being done, power studies have been done, explosive magazines have been done. Um, site-wide water balance, which is a big thing. So any water hitting the projects, whether it's rainwater or streams coming through, that's been done by SRK Cardiff. They're working on it at the moment. So it's just de-risk, 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 and get it shovel ready by the end of the year. So what we want to do by uh, 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 the end of the year is to start clearing that site, do the site preparation. Yeah, you, you've mentioned, um, and I want to come on to it later, about the, uh, the, the processing plant deposit at the end of the year, but there are two possible routes, as I understand it, for quite early cash flow uh, from Condor yeah. Go. Can you just talk us through the two scenarios, the two possible routes, which will get you to that early cash flow? Yes, and that's a, thanks. It leads into your previous question, which is the high-grade feeder pits. Uh, so they're highly economic. So we've done a, a special schedule to, to high-grade everything. So we take the highest grade out, and the average grade on the main pit is three grams, and the all-in sustaining cash cost, and that is six ninety dollars an ounce gold compared to the current share price of gold price. Sorry, of near it. 2000. Uh, so very, very low quartile globally. Now, the high grade scenario, including the feeder pits, takes us to 1.64 million tons at five, uh, sorry, 4.6 grams head grade. So that's a blended head grade from three areas for 225,000 ounces of recovered gold. So that's 50% uh, higher grade than the main pit, which is already uh, highly economic. Um, so what we could do with that 1,000 tonnes a day scenario, um, that gives you 1,000 tonnes a day for five years. You either put it through a smaller plant, so we put something out quickly and do it ourselves, and or there's nothing to stop us doing both of these, uh, toll minute, meaning we take it over to a uh, nearby processing plant, and there's no guesses for that. Caliber Mining have made announcements this week saying they have 1.5 billion tonnes of spare capacity at the processing plant. And they're trucking from the El Limon mine, which is near us. It's an hour away from us. It's further than Condor's Minalandia. They're trucking all, uh, they plan next year to truck 40,000 ounces or so over to, over to La Libertad. And uh, if we were to reach agreement with them, and we are in discussions, um, uh, we could do a similar amount. So that would put us, with minimal capex, that would put us into production quite quickly. So that so those are the two routes. Either do a smaller plant ourselves quite quickly, and or and I'm saying and or so we could do both, uh, do the toll milling. And I've seen figures of you know through the open pit, 120,000 ounces of gold per year. This is yes. this is significant production. It is the the 120,000 would come from the three pits. So the way that breaks down is the India pits 900,000 ounces and the two feeder pits are about 220,000 ounces. So there's 1.12 million ounces of gold, mineral resource, including reserve, permitted for extraction. So we've got the permits to take it out, which is, which is material. And then it's a, what really we're then sizing and going through different studies is, what, how do we do that quickly? How do we do that with minimum share price dilution? Bear in mind, Jim Mellon and myself are 20% shareholders in the company. So we don't want big dilution coming out. How do we maximize the share price? We're very focused on that for ourselves and for the people who backed us over many years. Um, so we, we've, we've got a, or you could just start with a big plant, which would be 120,000 ounces from day one, which is the one you're referring to. So we could do that. Um, we could do small, we could do big, we could do it in two steps. So another scenario we've looked at, we do 50,000 ounces of gold a year, day one, and then year three, we don't do 120, we do 170. So we really max it up. Now, that would be 120 from open pitable, which you've mentioned, but we've also got underground. So we have 1.2 million ounces of underground, which we haven't spoken about yet. But uh, as out of the cash flow from the smaller plant, the idea would be to infill drill, 
do the underground mine designs and so forth and bring that into production in, say, year three and do a big, big increase in the overall capacity to a much, much bigger gold mine, you know, 170,000 ounces. So we're, we're sizing all that right, right now. Um, we'll have a decision on that, I hope, before the end of the year. Nice problems to have. Nice problems to have on this monstrous deposit you've got there. I mean, you mentioned at the end of the year, it's this weird year that we're in is flying by. We're already in August. Four months to go. What should viewers and potential investors be looking out for by way of uh, you know, news flow in the next four months to the end of the year? Right. Well, we've, we've raised 7.3 sterling about eight weeks ago, six to eight weeks ago. So we, we, we've got we've got a, a reasonable lump of cash there to progress the project. Um, so we should buy the remainder of the land, so the other fifteen percent in the mine site into the other land, yeah, and buy additional land on the feeder pits. We have a hundred percent on the steez anyway, that high grade zone. Um, so we'll buy more land, further de-risk that. We'll complete more of the engineering studies, further de-risk the project. We should break ground, i.e., with a, a, a bulldozer and clear the shrubs by the end of the year. Uh, I'd like to put a deposit down on a plant. So say, yep, we're, we're, we put a deposit down, we bet on whatever it might be, 10%, say, and we've ordered this plant. Now that, that's quite critical because it'll demonstrate to Mr. Market <laughs> what size we're going for, and it'll demonstrate to the market. Uh, then we'll have a clear capex number because you can only have a definitive capex number. I can give you a rough capex number when you've actually bought it. <laughs> and then, because we have to fully engineer around it. Um, we might do some geotechnical drilling this year, uh, i.e. for the, the, the pit, for rock angles, for dams and tailings and storage. And we might do some uh, infill drilling. So, so the technical drilling is, is back. We're reviewing that. Um, the other side, we haven't pulled the trigger on this, is that, I mentioned we want to double our ounces. So uh, to get to 5 million, we'd have to drill more. Um, so we've had quotes from drill rig operators to go and drill out to expand the resource by another million ounces. Um, we're getting to the point in the market with gold at all time highs where the market might well reward us for that. Um, so uh, I think we're getting closer to a decision before the end of the year where there might be a bit of drilling as well. So I think there's going to be plenty of news flow over the next six months. Okay, so you're on that on the cusp, really, of going from being the explorer into very much now moving into this is becoming real. We're breaking ground. We're buying the land. We're moving into actually building the mine. Uh, this yeah, that's right. I think some people would be very surprised out there quite how advanced we are. Yeah, um, it's yeah. In, in investment terms, you're kind of being in the orphan period now, if you like, where it's all quite for, for the for the market, which is impatient and wants lots and lots of news flow. You. It gets you find the resource, you do the reserves, and then you've got to go through these tedious studies. But it's essential if you're going to build the mine uh, for ourselves or someone else built it. So it, it's um, de risk, de risk, de risk, and show a clear route to construction and then production and cash flow. Um, yes. Well, thank you, Mark. That was Mark Child, uh, Chairman and Chief Executive of Condor Gold. As I said, Condor is listed uh, in London on the AIM market on the main board of the Toronto Stock Exchange. Market capitalization of around 59 million sterling in London uh, has the ticker of CNR. As Mark was telling us, uh, very exciting times, breaking ground, uh, hopefully by the end of the year, uh, buying all the necessary land they need, and there's not much left to go of that. So exciting times ahead for Condor Gold. That's it from Blindway Business News today. Thank you for watching.